This is the World of Wellbeing podcast. I'm Luke. And I'm Holly. We invite guests on this podcast to explore themes of worldly wellbeing. And by listening today, joining the conversation. This is an extra special episode because actually we have not invited a guest on and we're also being filmed. So right now I'm looking at the camera in a slightly awkward way. There's a lot going on right now. But the exciting thing is we haven't invited a guest because we've invited ourselves. This is all about us. It's all about us. And as we have already discovered, it's a bit strange being in the same room recording together. It's super surreal. Um, This has taken a long time to get to this point, as the video will prove, because we basically laughed every single time, about 10 times in a row. Yeah, whenever we brief the, or like kind of prep the guests, we always tell them, don't worry, we'll record the intro and the outro after you've gone because we always inevitably get it wrong, make mistakes or laugh. Well, today was the kind of test case, proof is in the pudding example of that, because it took about 12 times. Yeah, and we're doing something else a little bit snazzy. You may have realised, I'm sure you did, that typically the intro-outro is, uh, as we said, separate, sometimes even at a separate time, whereas today we're going straight through. Yeah, so you know what? By the power of technology, I hmm. think uh, we'll have a little snazzy interlude of our music right now, our little theme. Oh, should we do it? Segwaying in in three, two, one. one. And we're back by the power of technology. Oh, honestly, I mean, just joy. I have a lot of love for that theme tune, I'm not going to lie. Do you know what? Um, about two years ago, when it was, when we thought, right, we need a theme tune. And... <laughs> when it was. <laughs> <laughs> when that was. And we had n- absolutely no clue what on earth we wanted. Neither of us, I would say, are particularly musical. No, I had listened to, like, one... I was listening to a certain artist at the time that was a bit weird. Um, <laughs> and I was like, I'm kind of imagining a riff on this. And that was literally all we offered this poor person that did the theme tune for us. There was one point where the theme tune actually sounded a little bit like I wanted to like bring out some kind of coconuts and dance on a beach. And I was feeling, you know, tropical, but probably wasn't quite in keeping. Yeah, we reined that in slightly. But yeah, um, that's a very long winded way of saying that uh, I have a lot of love for that. And also, um, I guess the podcast in general, Holly and I invest quite a lot of time and energy into this. Um, and it's definitely a labour of love, um, because that's all we get from it, is some love. (laughs) Um, but joyfully so. Um, and of course, with our shiny new logo and everything this season, with our new Instagram, at Wildly Wellbeing, on Instagram. (laughs) And any other Instagram platform that you can find. any other channel. Uh, Let's not forget to mention this point, um, our newfound fame on Ordea. Mm, talk about Ordea. Uh, so you may recall, dear listeners, a few episodes ago we spoke to Amit, uh, the founder of Ordea, and um, his, he will hate me for simplifying it like this, but his audio-only version of YouTube. And um, it's actually been a really interesting platform to be on. People are going there to listen to something. Um, so in that sense, it's been quite an encouraging platform to be on because there's a lot of sort of I think amongst other people who are putting up there, not just podcasts, but talks and ideas, as well as, I presume, new people, people going just to hear something. Um, so, yeah, I would definitely recommend going to check that out, particularly if you are someone a little bit like myself and I think Luke, who are absolutely sick to bloody death of looking at a screen. Yeah, I'm really over it. Um, and I think that platform in particular, or Dia in particular, we kind of riffed with Amit around the idea of spoken word rock stars, which we liked as a phrase, um, offers an opportunity for those of us who use our voices a lot uh, to be heard in a way that doesn't revolve around just staring at content all the time, which is really irritating. Uh, I'm trying to limit my screen time. Um, so I have that kind of thing that your iPhone yells at you at the end of the week about how much screen time you've spent, whatever. And I try and have my phone off between 10 and 7 p.m. to a.m. Um, so any opportunity, really, to connect with a different way of hearing thoughts and ideas, I think, is a positive thing. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, we thought that we would have an episode just with the two of us. Maybe 
exploring a little bit more about who we are. It might be that uh, you have listened and you've probably grasped a sense of maybe our different personalities, the different things that we're both passionate about. Um, but we wanted to kind of give you a little bit more of ourselves. So I was thinking, Luke, I was wondering, what do you think people at this point, if they do not know us, what have they grasped about the two of us so far? That we're quite opinionated, probably, is, yeah. is high up there. I hope that that's a, an, a I hope I'm not as uh, bolshy in my opinions as 23-year-old Luke was, or 13-year-old <laughs> Luke was. Um, but I think our, opin- that our opinions are clearly strong, uh, and we make kind of th- well thought out opinions but when we come to those conclusions that we share them yeah um that we are passionate about um conversation mm-hmm. and the importance of dialogue and that there are probably some key areas that we are particularly um uh, that we particularly want to focus on that we think are really important like the climate or like consumerism or other things like that that are linked into this overall theme of well-being this holistic approach to well-being so those would be my kind of initial musings on that question what about you yeah I was also thinking <clears throat> to take this to a less deep level but you know just more surface level what do you think people what do people how do people visualize us as personalities as people because you know i tend to ramble on about food quite a lot you are a yoga mm-hmm. i was gonna say yoga guru i don't think that's the right i word. don't think i'm quite a guru no no um but I, I guess people have been on a slight journey with us from the very beginning when actually in our first series i was off drinking wine getting excited about that you were starting your journey with yoga Mm. um we know that quite often we both come up with bright spark ideas mine are usually a little bit more fluffy around the edges where am I going with this how do people visualize us I think it's an interesting question isn't it because when you don't like some of you listening may well know us you know very well you might you might have known us for a long time or you might have got to know us recently but still have an idea of who we are and what we believe in and what we stand for you know what what our favorite item of clothing is you know all of those things about how you picture people um which i think is why it's interesting we're we're recording this episode as well because Mm. we are in a space that we're not usually in so i don't usually record in this room that i'm sitting in holly and i don't usually do it together in the same room as it were um, and I, cause I usually record separately. So it, it's quite a space. Um, and even little things like I'm wearing my glasses right now, or I'm wearing, you know, my, my husband commented this morning that I'm wearing a jumper that he likes. And I'm like, well, yeah, it's winter time now. So I've, you know, I'm switching over to a different style of wardrobe, like I'm layering up. So all those things that kind of make a person, you know, how we visualize people play into that. But then I also think it's like tone of voice. Yeah. And I think sometimes when you hear people speak, you imagine that they look a certain way. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, there are pictures of us out there. We're not like incognito. <laughs> um, much as we've tried. Much as we've tried. Uh, but, you know, you do imagine people to be a certain way. Um, I was talking about this in a training session I was delivering recently where you kind of, um, where bias comes into play. And you think, you know, if you were got a letter from Dr. Smith, would you automatically presume that Dr. Smith is a man or a woman? Um, And statistically, most people would presume that Mr. Smith is a man or Dr. Smith is a man. I think it's similar to the question you just asked around how we perceived. Um, Mm -hmm. For some people, we we might be perceived as these sort of like, you know, woke warriors that are, you know, spouting about stuff they don't really know about and, and trying to like challenge whatever the status quo uh, and maybe this, you know, we're wearing lots of hemp and floaty things, which I would love to be wearing. Which um, you can see I am not. Yeah. <laughs> Although, and I, I would love to channel that more, but clearly not right now. Um, I could actually, seeing you right here, I could visualise you in some sort of coloured, something very swoopy. Yeah, I was, the other day I did, it wasn't, it was, it was 
blank, which obviously is um, not to date, but often what the majority of my wardrobe consists of. Um, uh, and it was a giant, like, black, you've seen it before, black scarf um, that also <laughs> doubles up as, like, a massive blanket. And I used that in a meeting, which people thought was hilarious. I'm like, it's cold. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ensconce myself in this shroud. Um, so I'm all on board with that. But I think, yeah, like, that perception of, of, of people is impacted by data that we receive whether that's mm. audio or visual or kind of opinions that we formed about them previously um so maybe we should ask what, do i want to ask that question what do you think of us people who are listening <laughs> you know what yeah. is what, what opinions have you formed mm. over the last uh year and a half nearly just well, probably year and two thirds um that we've been doing this um yeah let us know, contact us, share your thoughts and musings. Yeah, because I think our first series, which if you haven't listened, I do encourage you to listen to, simply because you will just hear how green we were in the beginning. Mm. Um, Where we did, it was just Luke and I, but then we've sort of segued into what we think works really well and we enjoy is bringing on a guest. So of course our opinions are sort of, shuffled in there somewhat um but we don't often I suppose we might sometimes reflect on a nugget of our own experience but we don't often share too much because we've got a guest and we want to make the most of them for that 30 minutes so before we ask you another question Lika Babes uh I was just thinking on my way over here on the tube and I was thinking we people know we've been friends for what is it now 25 years yeah, I'm quarter fine. of a century. Uh, we've been friends for a long time. Um, but what I thought was really kind of beautiful uh, was that we met um, in Sunday school and church, mm. aged eight years old. And we've been friends since then. And what I kind of really loved was um, that, I guess, the values and the morals that we were introduced to at that time have stayed with us maybe behaviors and the way in which we view things might have evolved and grown definitely have evolved yeah there's been there has been some definite growth yeah lane changing we've been changing lanes but um i guess at the core of our friendship and a lot of what we talk about is that uh, those those kind of those morals and that care for the world and for others Mm. which we were introduced to albeit in a certain form, mm. um, but that stayed with us. One day we may, dear listeners, um, show you a little photograph mm. of teenage Luke and Yeah, because I don't think we've got photographic evidence from right at the very beginning. Mm. Um, there probably is somewhere in the, in the archives. Um, no one needs to see that. But that's not going to happen. But um, just kind of on that before perhaps we go a little deeper... I don't know if we've shared the kind of origin story of CMB, or at least part of it. Um, do they know what we're talking about? I don't about? even know what CMB is. I've just used language that is coded and is... Okay. is uh, maybe we'll save that for another time as well. I yeah. don't know if you're quite ready for that. Uh, uh, but uh, that mm. CMB are, are one of the many nicknames that we share for one another. Holly's just used another one as well, Lukey Babes. If anyone else calls me Lukey, I'd have a problem. Well, actually, there's one other friend that can probably get away with it. Um, I'm probably my mum. Oh, and your mum, yeah, yeah. But I would count her as a friend too. So a couple of friends you can get away with it, but generally my mum used to get quite angry when I was a kid if people tried to call me Lukey. Anyway, um, our origin story, uh, or one of them, uh, we used to have a, uh, a a sort of Sunday evening Bible study at the minister's house, um, which is exactly how you're probably imagining it. <laughs> uh, and it was it was before the kind of, there, were, there used to be a youth pastor as well, so it was before that, and the kind of youth work was done by the minister. Youth work, in inverted commas. Uh, and it was a very ordered household to the point where the sofas had to be. I'm trying to. I'm trying to do the best way to verbal. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that was my one. My main yeah, memory is... is cream carpet, and it's like a coaster. Yeah, for so your like, sofa legs. Yeah, so it's apparently to stop the the sofa from making too big a dent in the carpet. Mm. Um, but I don't really understand how it works because you're still going to make a dent. 
but yeah so if it, it kind of had like raised edges on this coaster but the chairs had to stay on it and if the chair moved oh my good so obviously like as like the kind of pre-teen teenagers that we were that was hilarious um uh and just that that kind of the sense of control in a way on that and i think that probably mm. i'm so sorry i just really wanted to interrupt you because i think we've also forgot to mention not only chair moving not allowed oh but noise yeah and you can probably guess that luke and i as well as our other friends back then we're noisy people um and we were supposed to all i remember was shh name of this child trying to sleep yeah and I mean, inevitably, within about two minutes, I- I've got no volume control. Luke's standard pitch is like louder than most people's. Yeah, I'm like, you know, if I whisper, it's a stage whisper. Like, I actually can't whisper because I, I have a deep voice. Even then, I was like, like, well, probably not quite then, but I was just loud. I can't blame it on the puberty. Mm. I was just, I was just loud. We were just loud and, you know, bless us, but we were precocious. Oh, we probably thought we were cool and we were really the biggest losers out there. Given the fact that we were at a Sunday evening Bible study at the minister's house, that does <laughs> demonstrate that coolness did not factor. Uh, and as the latter years demonstrated at various other church-based activities and the haircuts that accompanied, as we mentioned haircuts before, that accompanied those church-based activities, mm. coolness definitely did not factor. Uh, by, the, by the standard definition of cool yeah. anyway, we all cool in our own way. Because by the time I turned 17 and um, then I was able to drive and we used to borrow my mum's car to drive places, this is really when we, we thought we had hit pinnacle of cool. We were it, yeah. And by pinnacle of cool, what I mean is Luke and I used to drive to Sainsbury's mm-hmm. to buy ingredients to make a variety of flapjack based goods. Mm-hmm. We used to just go to, even though my mum had the ingredients at home, we wanted to be cool and get our own ingredients from the same trees. Yeah. So there you go. There's an insight that you probably neither wanted uh, and or desired, uh, but it, it has been landed upon you in the season of gifting. But talking about that kind of control piece that I started to mention earlier, about like kind of the, the rules and what you're talking about being quiet and that kind of thing. I think it probably could then structure what we might want to talk about next in that sense of, like you said, Holly, that the, the that period of time did instill in us certain an understanding of certain moral values, an understanding of a certain way to behave and, and you know, a, an approach to caring for people in the world and all of those things. But it was one through a lens of control or through an or through a, through a structure of control. These are the rules of this system and we will you can explore it but it has to be within that, that structure and I think perhaps one of our, our biggest journeys you and I collectively but also individually has been exploring what that looks like beyond those rules beyond that control and asking the what if questions um, which is kind of what we were touching on with Andrew a, a couple of weeks ago mm. uh, but I think we try and address in all of our episodes or at least most of our episodes about the kind of being able and willing to ask the questions, even if there's not always an answer. Mm. And I wonder if it probably didn't feel like it in our early 20s, but I wonder if coming from a a more structured or given viewpoint and coming out of that, maybe that actually helped us because I, I feel like maybe for both of us, I definitely speak for myself, like my 20s and even now my early 30s, I still just want to see things from different viewpoints Mm -hmm. and I still want to explore that because maybe because I've come from my teenage years being so structured Mm -hmm. and controlled um, that that, that's actually kind of worked to our benefit, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, And I, I suppose I quite literally wanted to see the world from different angles by traveling the world Mm -hmm. and by living in, in different places and, if you speak to me, if you have a conversation with me about travel or living abroad, you will very quickly grasp that I would say it's, well, actually, hands down, the most formative, powerful and just incredible thing to do. Not to say to everyone, you should go and live abroad. But personally, that was a way for me to see other people mm. in other lights 
to see the world through other people's viewpoints. And, you know, sometimes stepping out of your actual zone Hmm. really, I just learned so much about myself. Yeah. And I think, but I I, I think to come back on that, Hmm. I think that's because you were willing and open to those Hmm. experiences. You were, you had, you, you were able and and you desired to put yourself into that learning experience even though sometimes maybe it was an unconscious thing you were still kind of maybe moving away from that period of control and therefore wanting to find new connections and new ways of viewing the world because I think it's like what Andrew said a couple of weeks ago like that quote from the person whose name I now can't remember said that you know if you're an arsehole in um New England you'll be an arsehole in Belfast or whatever and it's, I think there's an element of truth in that. It's like you have to go through a process of being willing to be open and to being corrected, to being wrong, to dis- or not even being wrong, but to be to disagree with someone and to find a way to to acknowledge that we're all, even if we disagree, we're all still living in the same world. Um, and so I don't know if everyone is open to that. I don't think everyone, is, and I think travel does push, you know, push you on the way, but traveling to you know that you, you could travel to certain countries in Europe and not experiencing experience anything new of your it could be like being in the UK apart from better weather um so it's, I think it's about on where you go how open your mind is where you are in your own journey of self-awareness and self-realization um I think it's like multiple different factors yeah that's very true because no disrespect to Brits abroad but you could be living in another country, but completely embodying everything that you were back home. So, yeah, you, you raise a good point. I would just like to say that I don't even eat an English breakfast in the UK, let alone abroad. I don't understand why you do that. Um, thank you. <laughs> Public service announcement <laughs> yeah. from Holly. Talking about those opinions that we like to have. Mm. Um yeah, but I think acknowledging those kind of formative experiences, because they are going to, all those transformative experiences, they are going to be different for everyone, aren't they? There's no mm. prescription, and partly because access is not the same. So, you know, people who didn't have our experiences growing up will not have access to the things that we've had access to, and we've not had access to the things that other people have had access to. Um, so that tra- those transformative experiences do look different for everyone, I think travel has played a part in it for both of us. But I also think the past sort of 18 months, two years for loads of people has also, and I, I, we're not going to spend the rest of this episode talking about those two years because there's all everyone ever flipping talks about. Wait, so what happened? Something bad happened, apparently. But I also think something good happened because I think people began to ask questions about themselves in a way that perhaps they hadn't asked questions before. What do I want from life? What do I find valuable? What brings me joy? What makes me sad? Uh, you know, we're going through a period uh, that w- is being referred to in like the press as the great resignation. Like tens of thousands of people are resigning from jobs that make them miserable. And I think that's really powerful. Now that's obviously about coming from a place of privilege as well. Not everyone has the privilege to resign from their job. And there are you know, millions of people that are working in jobs that they just have to work in because they need to pay the bills. But there is a, a, a growing awareness that I find really encouraging that does give me hope about the power of transformation about the power of the collective humanness um and I think part that has come from in in part the last couple of years yeah what do you think um for yourself you were to share any sort of experiences or moments that would stand out to mm. you, let's go, oh my gosh, we're going to sound so old, but like the last decade. God. The last decade. Well, it's been, the last decade has been for me in London. So I, I think I mentioned this on a podcast this season previously, it's been 10 years now. So there's probably been a fair amount of that has, well, there definitely has been a fair amount of that time. Like in a couple of weeks, I'm celebrating my five year wedding anniversary, which is mm. terrifying. I was talking to a friend the other day and they were like, well, is it not three years? Because, you know, the last two years don't really count. Um, I was like, well, no, I definitely got married in 2016. Um, and side note, everyone, that was the first, and sometimes I threaten my parents, last time they will see me wearing white up an aisle. 
I had groomsmates, uh, three uh, of my very dear friends uh, were my groomsmates. Um, and they, I asked them to wear white because I wasn't in white. Anywho, um, slight digression. Uh, so yeah, the last last 10 years, I guess, has been um, a journey. Uh, and I think, <laughs> without sounding too pretentious, um, what, what kind of, if you were to put your journey onto, what kind of train were you on? I think at, to go into like Holly's imagination brain, um, <laughs> I think at times I was on one of those super fast bullet trains mm. that felt a little bit like it maybe shouldn't be going this fast. Mm. Kind of where you're a bit back in your seat. Yeah, and you're like, is it gonna is it gonna come off the rails or not? Mm. But also at times there have been periods where I felt like I'm on a on a stopping service. We grew up in a part of the country where there's this like now rickety train that services the town that we grew up in and the next kind of big city. Uh, and it kind of like creaks along. Uh, and I kind of felt like I was on one of those as well when there are periods of time where it's like actually I'm having to stop and pay attention to what's going on around me in a way that the bullet train doesn't let mm. you. Um, but I think a lot of the kind of really impact, there, there are obviously key landmark moments in my life, um, but a lot of the really big things happened before the last 10 years. Mm. So things like having to come to terms with my sexuality and my faith expression, that, I mean, I still have to kind of find ways to work through that. And that's what I help others do as well. But that was hugely transformational uh, and has had a huge impact on the way that I see the world and and the way that I interact with the world. Um, but I think also, uh, to steal your um, answer, every time I visit somewhere new, whether it's international or in the UK, I learn more about myself and other people. Um, and I think I'm more open to that now too. And I'm willing to kind of see things from someone else's perspective. Mm-hmm. And it's okay to walk away from that and still disagree as long as you're not harming people, as long as you're not abusive. Um, So I think there's just, I feel like I'm still in a, I I guess we're probably all in that life of, if you're really, if you're getting the most from life, I'm wondering if you are always growing and always open to transformation and always pursuing something next and other. So Luca Babes, on that quite powerful note, Perhaps we can open this up to our listeners. Uh, you know, if you want to, we always love to hear from you. What are you working towards, working on? I was going to say, where are your movements? But that sounds like a personal digestive question, which I don't know if we need to go into right now. Um, but I wonder... Oh. <laughs> God. How are your movements? Yeah, um, but... And on top of on top of that grief, honestly, sometimes I just think Holly, Donde Esther words. Donde Esther, your vocab. Also, really sorry if you're Spanish speaking out there. We I know that we have completely annihilated the pronunciation, but it does make it more entertaining for us when we say words in a very British accent. It makes us laugh. Yeah, we're laughing. The simple pleasures in life. Sorry. Um But thinking about that, we're nearly at the end of our fourth season, which means we're looking towards number five. (laughs) (laughs) You need an assistant to get (laughs) counting to five there. Yeah, so we're looking towards the the fifth season. Um, And maybe there's something or someone, a topic that you think you would love us to get someone on relating to. God, I can't speak today. Um, but yeah, I, uh, if if there was a topic you think would be of interest, um, if there's a specific person, please do let us know because we'd also love to make the podcast something that is, um, you know, relevant and interesting to you. Yeah, and layering in that interactivity as well, because I think mm. one of the things that we've tried to channel and we'll keep working on is making it more of a conversation, the whole join the conversation element to it. Yeah. Um, and so on that as well, like, there may be specific guests that you want to invite in and, and for us to try and talk to, but also I'm, and I think Holly's the same, well, I know Holly's the same, always looking to read of other, about others, listen to others, even if it's people that, you know, we're not going to get on the podcast because they're an author from 200 years ago or because they are a huge celebrity and let's face it, we're not quite there yet. 
Um, well, we could always try to slide into a DM. Slide yeah. into a DM. Oh, Lord DMs, no, thank you. Uh, pray against the DMs. Um, but, I, like, I, you know, we want to hear what you're engaging with. What, and regardless of whether it's podcast material or not, mm. share what you're reading, share what is challenging you at the moment. Uh, you know, I've been reading some really tricky stuff and I've read bits and thought, nope, I do not agree with you on that one. Um, but I kind of want to keep being open to learning more. Um, so, yeah, keep keep sharing with us. And also, if you have any questions for us, if you want to know uh, what C and B stands for, if you want to know anything else about us, your podcast hosts, ask us. Yeah. Uh, and you never know, one day we might actually tell you and show you a picture that demonstrates why that nickname came into being. Oh, great. Because it's not great. No. Um, but as Holly said, we are coming towards the end of the fourth season which feels nuts to be able to say that, uh, that we kind of, as I think we've reflected on the beginning of this season, looking back at what we've done uh, and listening to those like 12 minute episodes and when we were recording, they were like, oh my gosh, these are so, they're so long. We spoke over 12 minutes and now half an hour later, we're still chatting, probably could keep going for a lot longer. Um, but then also um, looking at the caliber of guests and just want to say, you know, uh, humble gratitude again to those who were able to join us uh, over the last three seasons um, in contributing because I feel like we've had a depth of integrity and uh, character that has provided really beautiful conversations that have often asked a lot more questions than have answered but I think that's part of the joy of the conversation. Agreed. And that means as well then that next week um, normally we might kind of have it so that the kind of the more us focused episode falls towards the end but we wanted to kind of sandwich in this one now because we felt that we might like to share a bit more about ourselves but also because we want to use the next episode to kind of just maybe draw some key themes together as a, as a more reflective piece um, and uh, we're excited to welcome back a previous guest so as pre as before we will uh, use the old instagram to let you know about who is coming back on to the Wildly Wellbeing podcast. But if you're an avid listener, you might be able to guess when I've used the word reflection. But we're really looking forward to having this person back uh, with us to kind of just bring some key themes of the season, another clue, uh, mm. and uh, maybe just find some of those loose threads that we've been talking about over the last season in particular and uh, and kind of draw those to a, to a close. If you can guess who it is, there is no prize except for our respect. And the honour of winning. Exactly, which, you know, no one gives a shit about. They just want a prize. But we don't have one. This no. is a shoestring budget, everyone. And I just wanted to make a rhyme out of that. Um, there is no prize, but you can subscribe. And we'd be delighted if you do subscribe. To, I'm sorry, um, do you think prize and subscribe rhyme? Vaguely. They don't rhyme at all. There is literally no rhyme there at I all. I was waiting for another line. I had in my mind we need to tell people to subscribe. Um and I had prize, and I just thought subscribe. Uh, but in all seriousness, L- listeners, this person teaches English to like foreign students. Look, my students, lovely. Je suis lovely. aghast. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you know what? They're here for what? <laughs> <laughs> um, not my rhyming. Subscribe. Let's get back yeah. on track. So please, I would really recommend subscribing because it means that. You don't have to be checking your Instagram every morning to see when we're letting you know that we've got the new episodes. It means that they will come directly to your in device box of your device. Yeah. In a Revo. Another Arivo. phrase that we incorrectly use all the time. Yeah, I'm really sorry. We have a lot of just phrases. Um, but all that to say that next week is the final episode of season four. Uh, obviously it is in the uh, joyful Christmas season so we will be sending you our best wishes if you celebrate that time next week Uh, and then we'll be looking ahead to as Holly rightly calculated the fifth season of the Wildly Wildly podcast Um, and uh, that'll be coming in early 2022 which is sort of terrifying oh my gosh so over and out from us from today uh, we're going to leave you once again with the joyful theme tune that we mentioned. Find us on Instagram at Wildly Wellbeing. Like, review, subscribe, share with your 
mum, your uncle, your enemy that you hate, spread the joy. And we will see you next week for the final episode of season four. Bye bye. Peace and love.